I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will tell of your name to my kin. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. But dear friends, John reminds us today that even though the light of Christ has come into the world, that people prefer the darkness rather than the light. Every time that we move towards the darkness, we move into sin and away from the light of Christ. Let's recognize the presence of the darkness of sin in our lives, and let us ask our God for forgiveness and for mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through a most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. As we recall year by year the mysteries by which, through the restoration of its original dignity, human nature has received the hope of rising again, we earnestly beseech your mercy, Lord, that what we celebrate in faith we may possess in unending love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The high priest interviewed with all of his supporters from the party of the Sadducees. Prompted by jealousy, they arrested the apostles and had them put in the common jail. But at night the angel of the Lord opened the prison gates and said as he led them out, go and stand in the temple and tell the people all about this new life. They did as they were told. They went into the temple at dawn and began to preach. When the high priest arrived, he and his supporters convened with the Sanhedrin, this was the full senate of Israel, and sent to the jail for them to be brought. But when the officials arrived at the prison, they found they were not inside, so they went back and reported. We found the jail securely locked and the warders on duty at the gates, but when we unlocked the door, we found no one inside. When the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard this news, they wondered what this could mean. Then a man arrived with fresh news. At this very moment, he said, the men you are imprisoned are in the temple. They are standing there preaching to the people. The captain went with his men and fetched them. They were afraid to use force in case the people stoned them. The word of the Lord. The Lord hears the cry of the people. I will bless the Lord at all times, his praise always on my lips. In the Lord my soul shall make its boast, the humble shall hear and be glad. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Glorify the Lord with me. Together let us praise his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me. From all my terrors he set me free. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Look towards him and be radiant. Let your faces not be abashed. This poor man called, the Lord heard him and rescued him from all his distress. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The angel of the Lord is encamped around those who revere him to rescue them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. He is happy who seeks refuge in him. 
The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Alleluia, alleluia. God loved the world so much, he gave us his only son, that all who believe in him might have eternal life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, God loved the world so much that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not be lost, but may have eternal life. For God sent his son into the world, not to condemn the world, but so that through him the world might be saved. No one who believes in him will be condemned, but whoever refuses to believe is condemned already, because he has refused to believe in the name of God's only son. On these grounds is sentence pronounced, that though the light has come into the world, men have shown they prefer darkness to light because their deeds are evil. And indeed, everyone who does wrong hates the light and avoids it for fear his actions would be exposed. But the man who lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be plainly seen that what he does is done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, this verse from John 3.16 is one of the verses I think that we really need to commit to heart because it can become quite a, quite a consoling, comforting verse, but also a challenging one. That God loved the world so much that he sent his only son so that those who believe in him may not be lost but may have eternal life. It invites us into the immensity of God's love. That when we look at our history of salvation, the times when God has sent prophets and people uh, to turn the hearts of people towards God, that it's been a history like, a bit like a roller coaster, where sometimes people have been open and uh, close to God's love and responded to it. But sometimes people have turned against that. But notwithstanding the fact that we have turned away at times from God's love and from God's life, God's loved us so much that he sent his only son to save us, not to judge us, not to bring us condemnation, but to give us eternal life. And John puts it out very plainly here that those who are condemned are those who turn away from the Son of God, those who turn away from the light, those who prefer evil rather than good. So the condemnation comes and not from God, but from ourselves. But these words, this verse, can give us strength that God has an immense love for us. No matter what we have done, no matter where we are, God continues to love us. May we, through this Eucharist, be empowered to recognize and to live by that love. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. With confidence we bring our cares and concerns before God the Father, who loved the world so much that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not be lost but may have eternal life. That the church may always be a living sign of God's love and mercy in times of darkness and despair. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may live in such a manner that the love of God may shine forth in all our actions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the love of God may bring peace into our hearts and harmony in our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That through the care and attention shown by this family, by their family or friends, the sick and those who suffer may realize that they are loved by God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our beloved dead may all share in the glory of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now turn to Our Lady of Lourdes, patroness of the sick. Mary, you always shine, shine on our path as a sign, sign of salvation, salvation and of hope. hope. We entrust we ourselves to you, to you health of the sick, sick. But the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. 
you, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure that you will provide, so that, as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father, and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows, to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Our Lady of Lords, patroness of the sick, pray for us. Heavenly Father, look with love upon all your children and guide us safely in our pilgrim journey. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands have become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the vine and work of human hands have become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Let us pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to look your Lord you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Vincent, our Bishop, and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At our Saviour's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our, our Father, Father you are, are in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your, your name. name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, bread. And, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, and that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and saved from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace in unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I have chosen you from the world, says the Lord, and have appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Alleluia. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those that you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
our Master's end, let us now go in love and in peace to love and serve the Lord.